questions. Let's just call it that. Beggars can't be choosers. If we need James Madison or, or Odegaard or both, we're lucky, bro. You might have to get some players that are not quite of that level. I don't think Odegaard is needed. I think that's I think that's harsh. I like Odegaard, just don't think he's the one. Keep these opinions coming, people. Keep these opinions coming. Um, let's let's back on, man. Let's get into it now, people. Appreciate everyone that's been locked in. Oh, sorry, sorry about that, John. I was getting worried, man. I thought did someone have fake news about me getting that and whatnot. Please get your comments in and things like that. Subscribe to me on subscribe to me on Twitch via Amazon Prime or just to on Amazon um, as well. I've offered my thoughts on Henderson. You can scroll back, but I would take Henderson for mentality reasons and the rest of it, my dude. But in relation to Lacazette, as I said, keep your... Um, man said Lacazette. I, in relation to Odegaard, we're just speaking about Lacazette. Keep your opinions flowing in and things like that. I'm pretty sure you've all, all woken up to the news this morning, you know, emerging out of quote-unquote in-the-know Twitter accounts on, on Real Madrid and now it's filtering its way into mainstream. You know, we all knew that, again... We said it. We said it earlier. We knew we was gonna do the Brendia links. Then we're gonna move on to a next target, and then we're gonna full circle back with Odegaard. Now, as you look can see here, a series of tweets. Now, this is you know they're just recycling what's come come out of this 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 guy, and he worked. You know, he's quite. He's a journalist and things like that. If we translate his bio, he's a journalist. He comments on TV um, of Real Madrid. He has his YouTube channel, and he loves his daughter. Which you know, shout to him for being a good dad among any everything. Um, as you look and see here, Odegaard is thinking and wants a return to Arsenal. Let's see what happens. Odegaard's dream was to succeed at Real Madrid, but he is thinking of returning to Arsenal. Neither the players' environment nor the club rule out his departure. Um, and apparently, you know, that Odegaard's future is still on loan, um, unknown. Obviously, last night you did see language about he's unhappy and whatnot. I don't know what's going to happen, you know. There's a long way to go until the end of the season. You hear, you know, Real Madrid have sold Varane and let Ramos go. I don't know if they're looking for a centre-half. I know they're trying to improve their wage structure and whatnot. They're struggling. I know they're trying to get Killian. At the end of the day... Arsenal have never had a better chance to sign him. You know, clearly the club doubled down on getting Odegaard. And I go as far as to say he's our number one target because you did kind of feel, based on what Arteta said, he hid no secret from wanting to keep him permanently from the minute he walked in and Odegaard. But the dream was always there. Now, I don't know if he's going to if this is going to happen quickly, if it is to happen, I don't know if this is one of them where he's in and around Real Madrid's first team in August and it drags throughout the summer. That's probably what is going to happen. But we've never had a better time. You know, if he's not happy with his environment, you know, what's changed? Because we were led to believe a few weeks ago, even a few months ago, he's part of Carlo Ancelotti's plans. He's going to play. He's going to do this. And that still might be true. But what's changed? Has Carlo seen him in preseason and said, you know what, you're going to be part of my team, but you're not going to be playing to the level. I don't quite think you're good you're good enough are they open to letting him go it you know Real Madrid are not really making significant additions in terms of buying people I know they've got Odegaard so I mean they've got Alaba so it might not make sense to let Odegaard go but again if you're Odegaard and you're not you're concerned about Real Madrid you know and his environment He's got a year or two left on his deal. There's never been a better time for Arsenal to lodge a bid. You'd probably get him significantly cheaper than James Madison. You know, for me, I'm trying to do this for 35 to 50 million euros. Obviously, the 50 will all be in add-ons. I'd be happy to bring Odegaard. I know a lot of Arsenal fans were underwhelmed by what he offered. We need to remember, while he underwhelmed off his underwhelming back, he did, did join mid-season. He did join a team that is not playing anywhere near to its potential in terms of the creativity and that, and the many other things that are wrong. I say Saying that, of course, he was a bit passive. Of course, the biggest praise and criticism, as I keep saying with Odegaard, for me, is that in a good sense, he looks like an Arsenal player, cultured, passed the ball of that. When things aren't going right, he looks like an Arsenal player, head down, nervous. You know, he does lead by example, but he plays within himself. And that's the one difference. We'll speak differently about it, but I think Madison has over him. But same way, I don't... I, but so, the way some Arsenal fans speak of my man, you would think this guy is playing League One or something. You'd think he's Danny Murphy. He's certified. You know, he's got resale value. He's technically been at the club already, so there's a bit of less adaptation. You know, he might even play better because now he's got peace of mind. He knows that um, it's an Arsenal thing right now and anything I do is for Arsenal. And then 
if these Madrids and these other teams want me in the future, I do my job and things happen. When you're on loan, it's always, you know, I had a bad game. They might not want me. I've had a good game. Are they watching? All of these sort of things. He would obviously be a leader amongst a young team. Obviously, for Real Madrid and Arsenal, it's two different ball games. It's not even just about being a footballer, let alone a good one at Real Madrid. You know, it's different how you have to carry yourself. And sometimes that can make or break someone. I genuinely feel sometimes when people sign for Real Madrid, a man's career there could be done before they've even played at the Bernabeu, when they're in training, because as you lot know, it's it's a religious thing. You can't turn you can't turn off from Real Madrid. You walk down the street, it's Real Madrid. It's not, you know, certain footballers, it's not a just play football and go home and come back. This is your life sort of thing. And I always say, make sure you're ready for it. And at 22 odd years of age, Izzy, obviously a new environment where a manager believes in you, not saying Carlo does or doesn't could help. Um, so it would make sense. And if you're him, you're not. Why would you sign a new deal straight away? If they, you know, if they put money in front of you, of course. But would it make sense for you to sign a new deal right now if you don't know if Real Madrid are going to play you? What if you play one game this season after tying yourself down? Where if you drag your heels out, they, Real Madrid are going to have to make a decision on your future or risk losing, losing you for even less people. So we would have to see. Um, you know, clearly, I, I personally think Odegaard's our top target. And especially because he might be cheaper in comparison to a, a, a James Madison. And for me, if that if getting Odegaard means that you can buy a right back, please go and do it. Um, I'm, I'm specifically not trying to say James Madison or Odegaard because we're going to get on to that. So for me, I would take him. Obviously, he's a creative man, but I think it's only half the battle. We need to get a lot more out of ourselves in the final third. If you sign Odegaard, you need an eight or you need to play either Smith Rowe and Odegaard or, and or Odegaard as that eight and let them be and let one of them play the 10 and then we go from there. But we'll probably see one of them off the flanks, one in the 10 and still a basic sort of pivot. You need different options. You know, Lokonga and Partey by default for me is our first choice defense and uh, midfield partnership. We need others. Xhaka, if you, if you say Xhaka basically still here. So by default, the games he's played, it'd still be there. So who knows? It could be press Odegaard's camp could be putting pressure on Real Madrid to seek clarity because there is a lot of young players around. There's him, there's Cabo, Kubo, there's uh Ceballos, there's a couple of people in and around the team. 500 odd of you locked in. Please make sure you're hitting the like button and also subscribe via Twitch to me, people. Big up yourselves. Um so yeah, it is it is it is what it is, people. I mean, you know, for me, I just want to see it sorted because I'm used to seeing our Odegaard, Wendia, this guy, even Grealish, Madison, all these guys ultimately to end up with nothing. And the faster we do this, the more they have to train pre before the season starts and stuff like that. And our season's starting very quickly. You know, I'm going to it. On Sunday, we're playing Chelsea. Then we've got Spurs. Then it's Brentford. A buzzing Brentford who's going to be, at, you know, going to be buzzing for life in the Premier League. Obviously, we've got City and Chelsea early doors. So, again, all this pre-season is just pre-season. We ain't really got time for that. We need to be moving fast and acting serious, people. Let me see if there's any official articles that have carried on this, this Odegaard sort of stuff. Um... Martin Odegaard considering, and it, and before I carry on, it's also important to remember, it might not just be an Arsenal thing, you know, just because he was here on loan and we're the ones primarily linked with him, it might not just be an Arsenal thing, you know, other teams could be linked with him, other teams might throw a spanner in the works. Right now, I don't know if he'll have many offers from top, 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 top teams, you'll find, you'll find some more intermediate ones like us, but you never know. What happens if someone's able to sell him a better project and, and, and to develop him better? You know, what if a, a Dortmund sort of thing comes in for him? It'd be silly not to consider it. Obviously, you're only going to step down after Real Madrid. There's only about two two clubs, three clubs in present day that are levels or better. But like you can see here, Martin Odegaard considering Arsenal return as he is unsettled at Real Madrid. And for me, what's changed? Because we were led to believe now he's being given an opportunity, the manager, this, that and the other. What's led to him not settling? Is he not gelling with the boys? I know a lot was made of the shooting drill video that I don't want to go over, but is he not settling? Is he you're not a tactical fit for Carlo? Has Carlo changed? You know, does he get the vibe he's not counted on? Does he want to feel a bit more important? We'll never know. All I care about is, can we exploit this and get somebody? And like I said, you should be trying to grab man for about 30, 30, 35 million euros. We're at 167 likes. There's 520 of you locked in. Can we run up the likes, people, and improve that and get to at least 200? You lot are being lazy. But like you can see here, Martin Odegaard is considering a return to Arsenal as he is struggling to settle at Real Madrid, according to reports in Spain. As you lot know, he joined us in January and quote unquote, I'm not sure thrived is the right word, but he just said he thrived under Mikel Arteta for the second half of last season. I think he played very well against Leeds. I'm sure against Benfica in the Europa League, he played well, as did William. Um, Leeds at home, 
Benfica, if I remember. Spurs, he was good. I'm sure Chelsea was good. Um, I'm missing out one more game. There's definitely one more game that Odegaard had, but five games, you know, two goals, two assists in 20 odd apps. It's not really there for what it's worth. He, I, I applaud you for joining us mid season. It is difficult. Like I said, the way we were playing wasn't set up for attacking players last season to thrive. Obviously, you have to let a man adapt to life in the league, anyways, you know. He, and I, I think, I, I think these things went against him. I also think. He started off underwhelming at Arsenal. Then he, when he found that real purple patch in form, he, I think unnecessarily once he was dropped and then the other, he went off to the international break. We hear he's playing with an injury and then he's out. So again, like with Thomas Partey, Granit Xhaka, David Luiz, Arteta needs to manage his players' workload or manage competitions better or just not play players when they're not fit. Stop playing people on, on injuries. I know footballers are never really fit. Someone's always got an, a niggling knock here and there. But I mean, come on now sort of thing. Um, so I'm not sure thrived is the right word necessarily, but earlier this summer, Arsenal were keen to keep Odegaard either on loan for another campaign or agree a permanent with Real Madrid. So again, it's all a game of chess. We tried to get it done early. That was our number one target. You heard them make no secret of it. Clearly, Odegaard came here to just impress Real Madrid. Nothing wrong with that. It was a relationship of convenience. We needed a creator. You needed a platform. You got it. Um, so we tried. It seemed the language we heard last year is well, last month or so is that it's not going to happen. It is what it is. Maybe that's why you started seeing us linked again with Buendia, which didn't happen. Different position, but relinked with Odegaard, re you know, linked with James Madison, linked with this guy, that guy, and the third guy. Now it seems for whatever reason, these sort of ones that we've been linked with, like Odegaard initially, isn't quite happening for us or isn't working out for us. So Maybe this is why we've gone full circle. Um, Odegaard revealed last month that Real Madrid are planning to keep him for the upcoming season. And he once again said it's his dream to play there. Um, but apparently the re a, a report claims that Odegaard is not 100% happy at Real Madrid and is now considering his future with the prospect of a return to Arsenal potentially available. An example of the apparent disconnect with Odegaard was evident during a training clip released last week as the midfielder's goal during a, sh a shooting drill was met by an awkward silence from Madrid teammates. Um, speaking last month, he said, of course, it has always been a dream to play here. I've been I've been in the club for six years now and has always been the goal. I always want to play. I have said that all the time. Playing is important. So again, has Carlo told you you're not playing? There's something else happening in that regard. I'm not too sure, people. But should we see what the actual Spanish article is alleged to have said? Oh, no, 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 we can't. But you lot are trying to get me a copyright case. But, um, yeah, man, we can't see what that is saying. But that's what the, the that is saying there. And, you know, you look at people like Isco, their futures are, 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 part of, are part of speculation as well. For me, I don't know. Obviously, I can't begrudge him for wanting to play for Real Madrid, but it seems like he keeps changing his mind. One minute I want to do up Arsenal, then I want to do Real Madrid. We haven't really got time for this. Odegaard may have changed his mind about Arsenal transfer as Edu Chase's deal. Let's scroll all the way down. Hopefully this isn't clickbait and there's something of credibility in this article, people. We know he said he had a special place in our heart. We know this, we know that. I'm trying to just scroll to the relevant parts, people. Despite the apparent goodbye, there may be a twist in the tale. Spanish outlet Madrid, Madrista Real have now reported that Odegaard is reconsidering a return to the Emirates next season with the player refusing to rule out departing the burnabout in the next few weeks. The update comes after on Monday evening that the Gunners and transfer chief Edu had not given up hope of right. pardon me of not si of signing the twenty two year old this summer. Mikel Arteta has previously made it no secret of his admiration for the diminutive playmaker. Um, the, at the end of last season, yeah, we have a clear and strong opinion on what we would like to do. So clearly, Odegaard is the number one target in my humble opinion. Whether it will correlate to happening, I don't know. But as I said, when Odegaard came here on loan, we had no buy option. We need to have plan. We need to have several other planned targets. You know, we keep seeing James Madison, uh, Odegaard, and things like that. Can you find someone that is of the standard to them, but might not be playing in the top leagues and all of these things? We'll have to see. People, I'd welcome Odegaard. Um, for what it's worth, people. So it is what it is in that regard. I'm going to get into Odegaard or, ne or Madison in a second, people, but I just want to see what you guys are saying. As I said, please make sure you're hitting that like button, people. We're at 195. Can we get that to 300 now? I know we're five off 200. I'm counting my chickens before it hatches, but I believe in you lot. Um, I like Odegaard, but I want Madison. Mine made up. Run the likes, people. Fact. 
A rate Smith robot for me, something is missing. I'm a big, big fan of Odegaard. He's like a prime Ozil for Germany that will probably score more goals. Odegaard will help us dictate games. And I think with Odegaard, it's a confidence thing. I think he's got the ability to help us dictate games. I think he's got the ability to score goals and get assists. He's, there's, he's 22, 20, 23. He needs to do this stuff now. There's a, it feels like there's an evolution and it feels like he's been written off unnecessarily. There's a lot he needs to improve. For me... Like with Smith Rowe, but I, I expect Smith Rowe to have things missing, as you said. He's, bro, he's 20 years of age. If he played in the first team properly for six months, he shouldn't be the finished dark call. If we were moving like he was, there'd be problems. But for Odegaard, for me, the main thing is confidence. Goals and assists, you need to get that in it, especially if you're a creator. But for me personally, the one thing I will concede, if you don't get goals and assists in abundance, even though we need that, especially Arsenal in midfield, is like you said, dictate games, control the tempo, the game runs through you. And I was a bit disappointed in that particular asset of, of Odegaard's game um, when he when he signed for us on loan. As I said, I know he joined mid-season, there's been other factors, but I've just, I just weren't there. And I, I don't think he's quite as brave as I thought he was. I do see him a bit vocal, he leads by example, but I don't think he's as uh, much of a risk taker, as brave in possession as I thought. Like I said, he fits in rightly and wrongly here um there's a lot of development the only criticism i can have and the one black mark on his on his cv for me is he's a confidence man every player's a confidence man but some more than others i think he's one of older guards one of these players i feel you have to keep like every training session or more or less every session you have to keep reminding them how good they are what they can do and things i'm not saying he's soft but i get that vibe um and I don't really need players like that because obviously when things go wrong, you need to face the music. When things go right, take the plaudits. But, you know, bad games happen. You're never a terrible footballer. No matter what people say when you lose, you're never as good as people say you are when you win. So keep balance. And I just feel a lot of players struggle with that. And I think a lot of people play safe. And there was a lot of time Odegaard was playing the safe passes and things like that. Um but again, you never know what confidence can do. And when you've got a manager like Arteta that rates him and likes him and wants to play him, that could tip the balance. I would take Odegaard because it solves our creative problems. Hopefully we could get him for 35, 40 million euros because of his contract. And in theory, for me, hopefully that would mean more money or more bread dedicated towards, for me, getting a right back, you know seeing what you can do with our in addition to what we're doing, seeing if other situations arrive in the market. Like, again, I'm sure United didn't plan for Varane. They were planning for a centre half, but the market became available and they exploited it. For me, if we can do all our business quickly and obviously try and get rid of some, then there might be some situations or some players that become available towards the end of the window that you didn't dream of really and truly. Like us with Mesut Ozil when it happened. Again, I'm dream chasing, but you get the point in that regard. The only criticism I would say on Odegaard is he plays within himself and I need bravery, man. Like I need man that I like, Tierney and, and people love that. Man are brave. You make a bad pass, so what? Try it again. You flop it twice, try a different pass it happens you play a bad game face the music you go again next game and I would have thought I would have got a lot of that at Real Madrid but he just seems like a bit of like a like a teenage a teenage boy that's lacking in confidence and a bit insecure that just needs a father figure in his life I, I get that vibe with Odegaard I like him as a footballer technical he's done that there's a lot more ability to come there's a lot more in Martin Odegaard's game to come whether he comes back to Arsenal or not but that's just what I believe that's the one thing I think Madison probably has glaringly over him is that Madison's got the ability like with Odegaard but he's got that swagger to it as well but we're going to get on to Odegaard or Madison in just a second people but that's what I believe in relation to Martin Odegaard please slap the like button people there's almost 600 of you are locked